Hi, it's Kind of Text here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare Debian for uh, building Linux from scratch, and specifically the version um, of Linux from scratch will be 10.0, which is the latest version. Um, but this should, this video should um, be the same for more or less any version. Um, and the version of Debian I'm building on, or I'm going to configure for Linux from scratch is 10.6.0. So I've got the login screen here. All I'm going to do is log in. This is just a basic uh, Debian installation. Um, it's fully up to date, so that should uh, cover all the versions of the software that Linux from scratch needs. So what I'm going to do now is get a terminal up. And I'll just make the font a little bit bigger. The screen is slightly bigger as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to become root. And I'm just going to mount a drive which has got the script on. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier for me. Um, because I'm doing this for several different distributions. So just to just to be sure, uh, show you what I'm talking about, the um, section of the Linux from scratch book. It's the prerequisites, or they call it the host system requirements. Um, this part here of the book, chapter 2.2, .2, it tells you all the versions and specific things about each package that are required. So these are the, the minimum version packages versions of the packages and the minimum uh, packages you need to build Linux from scratch 10.0 and this is the script that I've got I've just mounted on this drive so if I run that now you'll see there's several failures there so it shows that a default installation of Debian is not suitable out of the box to build Linux from scratch on so what I'm going to do is just go through each of these issues that are here um, and fix each one. You could do them all at once, but um, there's two reasons why I'm not going to do that. Firstly, I'm going to do each individual one just to show you each individual package that needs to be installed. And secondly, you may find that installing a particular package, for example, bin utils, it may pull in another one. For example, it may pull in... Um, uh, may, you know, maybe make it might pull in or patch, for example. So it, it, if you do do them all separately, one at a time, uh, you could save yourself a little bit of work anyway. So the first thing we need to look at, I'm, I'm not going to go through the versions by the way, um, that's easy enough once you've got all the packages installed just to go and compare it with the requirements here. So for example, bash 3.2 is required or, or greater, we've got bash 503, so that's fine. And in any case, if you're using a, an up to, a, a modern distribution and it's up to date then I wouldn't expect any of the packages to be um, uh, under the requirements of Linux from scratch. So the first problem we've got here it says error the bin sh does not point to bash you can see there it's shown us what the sim link is pointing to and it's pointing to dash in the book it does say you can you know build with uh, um, other shells apart from bash but there is a chance that something might not work. So what we'll do is we'll fix this. Bear in mind that if um, you do use, the, you know, whatever that bin sh is pointing to, if you use a different shell normally, um, or you have other users on the machine that use different default shells, then bear in mind you may need to switch that back if, um, if you need to carry on at another time. But considering we're using this system to update um, or create a new system then the chances are um, that's not going to be a problem so to fix that there are various ways of changing the default shell but I've found the most foolproof one is just to overwrite the sim link with a new one so we can do minus s f v s is for a, a soft link f is to force it um, in case it's there which it already is it'll, it, um, it could be that it won't 
um, overwrite the link because it already exists. So we just force it. We just want to overwrite it. And V is for both. So it just shows us what it's doing, what we're, what we're doing with the command. And we want to tell the link command ln that we want to link the bin bash command to the bin sh link. So what that'll do is it will overwrite the bin sh link or it will create a brand new link in bin called sh and it will link it to bin bash. Do that and you can see it's it's actually told us because we did the verbose option that bin sh points to bin bash. So if we rerun that script now you can see the error's gone and it's telling us again that bin sh is pointing to user bin bash. In fact, that looks like that bin bash is probably a sim link pointing to user bin bash. So, um, let's see what the other one was. Yeah, it was the user bin dash. So, in theory, it probably would have been more correct to do user bin, sorry, not that one. That one there. User bin sh. So, now if we do the script again you see it hasn't changed but it's probably more accurate we've actually set the sh sim link to point directly to the um, binary bash so that's that done the next ones are all about installing fresh packages so the first one we've got is bin utils is missing so in debian we use apt install and luckily the name of the package is just bin utils and you can tell us, see that it tells us how big the package is and how much space it's going to use just press enter there and it will download the package and install it and as I say you may notice with some of these um, I've not made a note of which ones do or don't but you may notice that um, where it says the following new packages will be installed you may notice some of the other ones here get get installed as well so if that happens and i notice it i'll i'll point it out so let's run the version check again so you can see bin utils is now installed it's not complaining about that the next one we've got is bison command is not found so again that's fairly straightforward just apt install bison yep So I'm just pressing enter there where it says yes or no. The default is the capitalized Y, so by pressing enter the default will be yes. So let's recall the script again. And you can see Bison's now there. And I didn't know if notice I didn't point it out that the um, link to Yak is not there, but by pulling pulling in Bison, that link has been created. So that's that's fine. So we fix Bison and that link to Yak. Okay, so the next one we've got is Gork. And again, that's fairly straightforward. Just type in Gork. That one doesn't ask us if we want to install, probably because it's tiny. Let's look at the script again. Yep, Gork is there now. And there's also another sim link that's been pulled in for Gork as well so it's got a sim link in user bin orc which points to Gork so that's good so the next package we've got missing is GCC and again this is fairly straightforward just to apt install GCC so this is quite a big one wait for these to download and when it's got them all it'll install it It's done. Let's run the script again. And there we've got GCC now. Um, so the next one we need to do is the C++ compiler, which again is fairly straightforward. It's just G++. So download that. And 
it's done. Rerun the script and yeah, we've got G++ there now. Glibc is okay, GNU, that's the kernel. So the next one we've got is the make command, quite fundamental. Without make, you won't be able to run any of the make scripts to do the compiling. So let's pull that one in. Nice small one. And run the script again. So that's there now. Next one is patch. Okay, looks like it's a small one as well. Rerun the script. So there's patch. Got Perl Python. So next one we've got is make info. Now, as you've seen so far, I've been basically putting the, the name of the package that's missing into the apt install. Well, make info is actually a binary for from another package. So for example, patch and make are actual binaries of the make package or the patch package. That's why they worked. If we typed in make info here, it wouldn't work because make info is the binary. I'll just do it to prove it to you. So make info is actually part of a package called text info. So that's the um, package that we need to pull in here. And you can see it's found it and it's pulling in a load of other stuff. So we'll just press enter there. Let it install. And when it's done, we'll rerun the script and that should be everything complete. So just quickly run down this again. Got the bash, got the symlink, we've got bin utils, we've got bison, we've got a yak symlink, bzip2, core utils, diff, find, awk, a symlink for awk, the C compiler, the C compiler, the libc program, grep, gzip, the kernel, m4, make, patch, Perl, python, sed, tar, text info, which is the make info program we needed, and xsed. So all the packages there, and it's done a little sanity check on the G++ compiler, and that's passed OK. So this um, system is now in a fit state where we can carry on and do the uh, Linux from scratch installation. So thank you very much for watching. If you found the video useful, um, appreciate it if you uh, click on the like button and also I appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more of these sort of videos. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.